Good morning. I'm Gary Pyatt from Family Worship Center in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I want to bring you a quick word of encouragement today. I don't know what you're going through, but I do know there's hope for a brighter future. One of my favorite Old Testament characters is King David, probably the most famous of all of the kings of Israel. And my story comes from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. And I'm not going to take time to read it to you, but I really recommend you go back and read 29 and 30. And But let me just kind of set the stage. David has a small army that follows him, and he gets up, and they go to work that morning, only to learn after he gets there with all of his army and his troops there, they've been fired. They've lost their job through no fault of their own. So they turn around, and they head back home. And when they get to their home, while they were gone, getting fired from their job, Someone has come into the town, kidnapped all of their wives, all of their kids, all of their belongings, and then burned whatever was left to the ground. And you think you've had a bad week. The Bible tells us that these men sat around crying until they could cry no more. In fact, his own army now spoke of stoning their leader, King David really doesn't surprise me that they would react this way. In fact, if you go back just a few chapters to learn who are these men that are fighting with David, in 1 Samuel chapter 22, verse 2, it says, And everyone that was in distress, everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves to him. He became a captain over them. Do you know who these guys are? These are the men that were chosen very last to be on anybody's team. You know, when you're picking teams and everybody's got already chose up, these are the guys still standing there. David takes them and tries to make an army out of them. The distressed, the in debt ones, the discontented ones. <clears throat> in fact, in the next chapter, David gets them ready to go out for their first deployment. And they look at David and they say, quote, we're afraid here at home. How much more afraid will we be out there? There's the kind of army you want fighting for you, okay? These are the type of people the glass is always half empty. It doesn't matter how well things are going, they're going to see the bad side of things. So when things actually do go bad, they lose their jobs, they lose their families, they lose their homes, they lose everything. It's not surprising they get further depressed and want to go turn on their boss, King David. Many of us would probably do the same thing. Listen. You may have lost your job or been cut back on your job through no fault of your own during this time. You may also have some of those friends hanging around who like to see everything that's wrong. They always point out the negatives. Say, well, I'm in lockdown mode. I don't have anybody hanging around. Okay, turn off the news. Get off of social media. Don't watch how bad everything is going. It's going to depress you. You may have lost a lot of money in the stock market as you're uh, about to retire, or maybe you're already retired. Turn off the market news. Quit checking your portfolios. We need to do what King David did during this time, not what his men did. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6 ends with this. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. You may ask, how do you do that? How do you encourage yourself? Well, the Bible didn't go into a lot of detail on this part. So allow me to insert my thoughts here. I believe David started counting his blessings. He remembered back to when he was keeping his father's sheep on the side of the hill and that lion came in to attack him and how the spirit of the Lord came on him and helped him to kill the lion. And David started feeling good and he sat up better. He goes, whoa, God did that, remember? And then he started thinking about the bear, the time that bear came and how God helped him to kill that bear that was attacking his sheep. He's feeling a little better. And then he remembers the battle of all battles when he goes up against that giant Goliath and how God had delivered Goliath into his hands and David could no longer stay depressed. He knew that if God had helped him in the past, he would help him now and God will help him in the future. What I'm suggesting is that during this time, you start to count your blessings. I remember when the doctors told us that my wife would never be able to have children. In fact, at the age of 18, they wanted to do a hysterectomy on her. But God came through. Today, we have two wonderful kids and four grandchildren. I remember another time when Peggy was six for eight or nine months straight and could barely get out of bed and the doctors could not figure out what was wrong. But again, God sent someone through our town. 
I don't even know his name. He was just passing through, visited our church that Sunday. Peggy had to drag herself out of bed to go to church, but she said, I'm going to make myself go to church. Nothing exciting happened when he prayed. But after service, he said, can I pray for you? On the way home, Peggy looked at me. She said, I felt something this morning. This was different. Hadn't felt it before. And from that day on, Peggy got better. Now I could go into what the doctor said because they didn't do it, but they too gave God the credit. Today, Peggy works as a registered nurse in our local hospital, taking care of COVID-19 patients. Now, this past week, she was inadvertently exposed to the COVID virus. Yesterday, Peggy was tested for the virus. We don't have those results back yet, but neither are we living in fear. We're living in quarantine, but not in fear. We trust God, and we're believing for negative test results. Now, I could go on and on through my life and start to remember every time God came through for us where there didn't seem to be enough uh, money to pay the bills, and yet God helped us get it paid. But what you need to do is start remembering how there was a time when you had no money and even more bills than you have now. Yet God somehow provided and you survived. Remember how when you were sick, God stepped in and healed you. Start to count your blessings. Do you have a place to sleep? Do you have food to eat? Do you have clothes on, on your back? Do you have transportation to get around? Do you have toilet paper? God has blessed you. There's a prayer circulating around through social media that I believe it's by someone named Cameron Bellum. And it kind of goes like this. I'm going to read it to you this morning. It says, may we who are merely inconvenienced, remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors, remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must who have no home. Remember, may we who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools close remember those who have no options. May we have to can't who have to cancel our trips remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money on the in the tumult of the economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for quarantine at home, as Peggy and I are doing, remember those who have no home. And as fear grips our country, let us choose love. And during this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around our neighbors, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to all of our neighbors. Amen. Isn't that a wonderful prayer? No matter how bad you think it's going, there are others who have it even worse than you. So you still have something to be grateful for. Remember, count your blessings. It'll bring encouragement to your day. You remember how God helped you in the past. He can help you today and he'll help you tomorrow. Now, for those of you wondering how Peggy's really doing, here she is. Hi, I really am fine. I'm just in quarantine until I get the test results back. Thank you all for praying. Love you guys. Count your blessings. God is awesome. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.